tonight on CTV Sports, the women's basketball team has made history. Plus, find out how the men's basketball team did on the road. And baseball season is underway. All this and much more coming up. What's cooking, good looking? Welcome to CTV Sports. We hope you had a fabulous Valentine's Day full of time with your special someone. Or maybe you sat on the couch eating ice cream by yourself. Hey, either way, we hope you enjoyed the holiday. Liv, it was a busy weekend in Colorado State Athletics, so let's get right into it. The Colorado State women's basketball team and Charlie Sheen have one thing in common. They're winning. The Rams crushed UNLV in the pink out game at home on Saturday, 83 to 52. CSU drained 12 three-pointers in the contest, led by Jamie Patrick, who had five and a team leading 19 points, which led all scorers. CSU had an impressive 23 assists on 33 made baskets against the Rebels. The Rams have now led from start to finish in four of the last five games. With the win at Moby, CSU has won 12 straight at home. To go along with that, the team has now won 19 games in a row, tying the school record from the 98-99 Ram team. Colorado State will try to make school history and claim a 20th straight win against Utah State at home on Wednesday. Here's what head coach Ryan Williams had to say after the win about his team deserving its own era. We well, must be pretty good because everybody talks about that, that one team, that Becky Hammond team, that era. I mean, so do we get an era now? <laughs> give, give, give these kids an era? Um, I, I, it's pretty special, to be honest with you. Winning college basketball games is hard to do. It's hard to do. And whether you're at home or whether you're on the road, and we've had some tough ones, but um, I'm glad that this group has that or they get to share that. Liv, this team just keeps winning and winning and winning. No one seems to stop these guys. No, they're really on fire, Brett. And I think the fact that they had 23 assists with 33 made points, I think that shows that this team is not a selfish team whatsoever. They play together well, not only offensively, but defensively. And I think that goes that credits a lot to their success. They really do. They love to pass the ball around a lot. We have said in the past, this is a deep team. Anybody can come off from the bench and get you double digits. Ryan Williams said he in the press conference that he has one of the best jobs ever. He could just toss anybody out there and say, go win the game for me. It's going to be a big game on Wednesday night. Pack Moby Arena against Utah State to try to get that 20th win in a row. It's going to be huge for Ryan Williams and his team. I think every game from here on out is huge for them. Not only the fact that this team is making history as we speak. We haven't seen a team this good in a really long time since Becky Hammond. It's just it's an exciting time. It's been an exciting ride. A lot of good players. Great coach. We'll see what happens towards the rest of the season. Well, the turnover bug bit the Colorado State men's basketball team on Saturday night in a road loss to the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. CSU struggled to overcome a season-high 21 turnovers that UNLV turned into 22 points. After the 87-80 loss, the Rams fell to 14-11 and on the season and 6-6 six and six in the Mountain West. The Runnin' Rebels improved to 15-11 and on the season and sit at 6-7 and seven in league play. The two teams ended up splitting the season series. CC's poor shooting also contributed to the loss, shooting under 29% from the three-point line. One highlight of the game, however, was that five CSU players entered double digits, led by senior guard Joe Desimon, who totaled 16 points, and Emmanuel Omogbo racked up a double-double with 12 points and 10 rebounds. Colorado State now looks to head to Logan, Utah, to take on the Utah State Aggies this coming Wednesday. Well, Brett, I think that... This was a disappointing loss for the Rams, losing, coming off of that really big win against Boise State. Very controversial, but still, I think, I think that they need to look ahead and really focus in on these next games. Yeah, as you said, that Boise State win was huge for this team, but against UNLV, they struggled shooting the ball. We have said in the past, that's going to make or break this team. 
Uh, CSU shot so much better in that Boise State game than they did against UNLV, and that's just showed they contested and they won that Boise State game and they lost the UNLV game. This team has enough veteran leadership on the team for a rebound, and Larry Eustace is a great coach. But as you said, these next couple games are going to be big going into that Mountain West tournament. Yeah, I think they really have to focus and really treat every game one by one and treat it as this, as if it is going to be very important because it is important, especially in this Mountain West play with so many teams being able, just being so far up on each other. You know, I think, I think it plays a big role in that. And once the tournament begins, it's anyone's ball game, so you never know. Absolutely. Well, the Colorado State softball team wrapped up a busy weekend at the Aggie Classic in College Station, Texas, losing five games. The Rams had a doubleheader on Friday, falling to Wichita State in the first game and UCLA in the second game. CSU came close to defeating the number seven ranked UCLA Bruins, cutting it to a close six to five loss. The second day of the Aggie Classic brought the Rams two more tight-knit games, falling in an extra inning affair against Wichita State, 9-8. CSU also dropped a fourth game 3-0 to to the Aggies later in the day. The final defeat came in the last day of the tournament with a battle against UCLA that ended in another loss for the Rams. CSU now looks to travel this weekend for the UNLV tournament in Las Vegas, Nevada. The CSU club baseball team headed down the I-25 corridor for a four-game series with the Trinidad State Junior College. With a great weekend of weather for some baseball, the Rams were looking to pick up a couple wins as left-handed freshman Phelan Castaño took the mound for the game on game one on Sunday. Unfortunately, the Trojans must have ate their Wheaties, racking up over 30 hits in the two games on Sunday. CSU just could not push, pa push past the runs and get enough runs uh, needed to win these games. Losing game one 15 to three, and in game two it didn't get any better as the Rams couldn't muster any runs. However, the Rams tried to put game one in their rearview mirror, but Trinidad State came out hot, scoring 17 runs in just five innings of play. Even though the club's team has started off slowly, a lot of players are staying optimistic and looking forward to getting better. A really national championship. It's been to the nationals for two times in previous years and it's just haven't been able to come home with the trophy and really would like to come home with the trophy this year and on top. Definitely getting past regionals and winning a national championship. We went in one seed last year and didn't, get, didn't accomplish what we wanted so uh, we definitely know that we have the talent here to get a national championship and win it too. Breaking school records seems to be a consistent theme for the Colorado State men's and women's track and field team recently, with athletics competing at both the Don Kirby Invitational in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and the Husky Classic in Seattle, Washington. Friday night marked a successful beginning to the weekend for the Rams. Junior Gerald Mock destroyed the previous CSU record for the men's indoor 5,000-meter run in Seattle with a time of 13 minutes and 46.2 seconds. Leah Fair also broke her own record again in the 200-meter dash in New Mexico with a time of 23.7 seconds. Saturday called for more success as junior Emily Romo broke her record in the 400-meter dash again, this meet bringing in a time of 54.7 seconds. Joining Romo in the record books was junior Jefferson Abbey setting a new time to beat in the 3,000-meter run. The Colorado State women's tennis team had matchups with Wichita State and Nebraska in Lincoln, Nebraska this past weekend. On both days, CSU lost 7 to nothing. On Sunday against Nebraska, several matches were tightly contested. Although they lost, Madison Porter and Ana Hernandez Soler made it to three sets in their matchups. CSU's next match will be against Colorado College this Saturday at the Fort Collins Country Club. The CSU women's golf team opened spring season with a close loss to Brigham Young University, coming up short 878 to 861 in Phoenix, Arizona. The matchup was two rounds on Friday and one round on Saturday. Despite the loss, though, the team's score was the eighth best rec recorded score in school history, giving the team its third top 10 all time finish of the season. The Rams compete in the Gold Rush Tournament next, hosted by Long Beach State, February 22nd through the 23rd. The Mountain West Conference Championships begin Wednesday for the Colorado State Women's Swim and Dive Team. The biggest event for the year for the team will last four days in College Station, Texas. Ram athletes to watch include Karen Rowe and Katie Kickleiter, who are a part of CSU's 200 medley relay team. Eyes will also be on senior Jessica Shepard, who recently won CSU Athlete of the Week. 
CSU is coming off a 186 to 111 win over Northern Colorado a couple weeks ago. Stay tuned to CTV later in the week for updates on the meet. Well, it's time for a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Tune in to KCSU, your student-run radio station at Colorado State University. Live 24 hours a day, every day at 90.5 FM and kcsufm.com. Live local new music now and news, talk, and sports. KCSU, the radio voice of Colorado State, on the air since 1964. You're watching CTV, produced by Colorado State University students, bringing you news, weather, sports, and entertainment from campus and beyond. CTV live Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. on campus and Fort Collins on Channel 11. Repeats at midnight, 8 a.m., noon, and 2 p.m. The Rocky Mountain Collegian is your student-run news and information platform. Pick up your paper on campus or around Fort Collins Monday through Thursday with special editions Fridays. And check out Collegian.com anytime for all the latest updates. News, sports, entertainment, opinion, and more. The Rocky Mountain Collegian, serving Colorado State since 1891. College Avenue has been your student magazine for the last 10 years. College Avenue prints once a month covering topics that are relevant to the CSU and Fort Collins community. We also print special editions like the graduation guides at the end of each semester, the best of CSU each fall, and the orientation guide each summer. Look for us on racks around campus, off campus, or online at collegian.com under the College Avenue tab. Welcome back from the break. Since Valentine's Day was yesterday, we thought we should play a game called Love or Hate. Liv and myself will be given a statement and we will love it or we'll hate it. Well, Brett, our first statement is Blake Griffin will be a Denver Nugget this season. Love it or hate it? I'm going to say I hate this one, Liv. Blake Griffin is a big name and I'd love to see him on the Denver Nuggets give that team some veteran leadership, but I just don't see it happening. Chris Broussard, NBA reporter, earlier in the week said it was already shot down by the Nuggets. Again, that could come back up again, but I just don't see it happening. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to agree with you on this one. I'm going to say hate it. I do think the Nuggets have been looking for a bigger name, maybe spark something here in this team that they haven't seen in a while, but I do agree. I don't think it's going to happen, so I'm going to have to say hate it. I would say so too. Next one, Rashard Higgins will be drafted by the Denver Broncos. Live, love it or hate it? This one's tough, but I'm gonna have to say hate it, Brett, because I mean, we do know the Denver Broncos do like local talent. I mean, Shaq Barrett, Ty Sambrello, and Capri Bibbs, they've all been super well-known Rams that went to the Broncos, but I don't think it's gonna happen for Rashard Higgins. I'm gonna say hate it as well. I would love to see Rashard Higgins on the Broncos. Demarius Thomas had a lot of drops this past year, and who knows what his Denver Broncos future will be, but I just don't think uh, Rashard Higgins is going to them. I see another team looking at the CSU tape and picking him up in the draft. Speaking of Capri Bibbs, will he make the Broncos active roster next season? I'm going to say I love this one. I really do. Uh, C.J. Anderson, uh, Ronnie Hillman. I just think Capri Bibbs makes a good third running back for this team. I see it happening. Uh, Denver loves that local talent. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to agree with you on this one. I'm going to say love it because he's been, they've liked him enough to have him on the practice squad for two years, so I think they're going to keep him. All right, well, we are running out of time for the show, but let's end tonight on a highlight, or should I say a low light. The club baseball team did lose all four games this weekend in Trinidad, but they didn't have a blooper quite like this. And there it is, bro. Trinidad State's catcher must have been rubbing <laughs> Vaseline on that baseball live. Woo, you never see that too often. Yeah, let's see it in slow motion, and there it is right in oh front of the mound. I'm not goodness. sure goodness who or what he was going for right there, but obviously it did not bring too much success. He's going to be getting stuff for that all week. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> including from us. That's all the time we have for you guys tonight. Be sure to check out all of our sports coverage throughout the week on Collegian.com. Have a great rest of your night and we'll see you guys next week.